welcome back. Today's tutorial is for the Ashley Clutch Wallet, just in time for the holiday season. If you're looking for a gift to give or a fancy clutch to match your favorite holiday outfit, we've got you covered. So this is clutch slash wallet. We include instructions on how to add a strap if need be, or you can just keep it in the clutch mode or a wallet mode. It is roughly seven and a half inches wide by six inches tall. It does feature a bar clasp closure. Inside is pretty roomy. You've got two zippery compartments. You can put your cash, your coins, or any small items inside. You've got three card slots on one side as well as three card slots on the other side. You can fit your phone and any other small items. I have written it specifically for quilt cotton. We do use some nice stabilizer to give it a nice feel to it, but I've also written it for vinyl, cork, or leather. Here is that example, a beautiful lace vinyl. I've added a crossbody strap or a shoulder strap to take it into purse mode. So I would consider it a confident beginner. I mean, the bar class is probably new for a lot of people, but, and the gusset is a little bit tricky, but I give you all the tips and tricks you're gonna need in the video so that you can be successful on your first try. So gather those supplies and make one with me. So for today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make the Ashley Clutch Wallet in all quilt cotton. But I also have a vinyl version cut out so that I can show you the minor tweaks that would be needed to make a wallet that's all out of vinyl, cork, or leather. But each variation turns out beautifully. Now the main thing that I wanna point out is that for any nice structured wallet, I feel like the interfacing is super important. So for this wallet, I really do call for the Decaville Heavy. It gives it a really nice, finishing feel and it works great on the quilt cotton but also vinyl cork and leather. If you don't have the Decaville Heavy, you could try two layers of the Decaville Light. I have not tried the, the main body stabilizer in Peltex, but you're, you're welcome to try it. I just find the best wallet version and all of my prototypes had the Decaville Heavy. Now I did call for Decaville Heavy strips to go along the top as well, but if I'm gonna be honest, I like the loftiness of the Peltex strip, so I cut those for this demonstration, but I didn't wanna to have to write for the materials list of literally scraps of Peltex when um, you, it, you can make do with the, the Decaville Heavy. So because this is all quilt cotton, I did already add a woven interfacing to all of the back pieces before getting started. And I'm gonna cut back and forth and assemble a vinyl cork leather version so you can see the minor tweaks that will be needed to do that version. Now I mentioned before, for the video, I'm gonna do all quilt cotton, but I'm gonna bounce back and forth to show you the minor, minor variations used for vinyl. So this one is a vinyl. I've already fused the Peltex or the Decoville Heavy to the back of this. And then the difference between the vinyl and the quilt cotton is that we're cutting um, two exterior and two liner that will be sewn together. But for the vinyl cork or leather version, um, we're not sewing these together because it can add considerable bulk, especially if it's leather and you haven't skived it and all those things. So what I do have cut here are HTV, heat transfer vinyl, that I like to put on the wrong side of a vinyl or cork so you can't see this fabric backing because to me, when you can kind of see that on the inside of the wallet, it looks unfinished and I feel like it's an easy fix for this. Another option is you could take a lightweight quilt cotton, maybe baste it in place before we fold that top edge, but I wouldn't make the vinyl cork leather like we do fabric because it will be very bulky up top and when we sew the gusset in or we add a strap connector to the side, which I'll explain later, it can be too bulky. So like I said, I'll cut back and forth to show you how we do these minor adjustments. But when you look at the main body piece, I do have two different pattern pieces within the pattern. So if you're using fabric, make sure you're printing that pattern piece because it is wider because we will have a folded edge. The vinyl cork and leather is left raw, but you will not see this raw edge in the final make. It's not worth p painting or worry about or anything like that. So don't let that, that stop you, but make sure you're using the right pattern piece for the material you're working with. Another important point to make is that I'm not using a directional print for this because the main body piece is one, one piece. So if you go to fold it in half, either your front or your back will be upside down because it wraps around. So keep that in mind. If you're using a directional print, you're either gonna need to create a seam along the bottom and add extra um, height 
to account for that seam or skipped the directional fabric. So when you're working with quilt cotton, the only piece that does not need the woven interfacing is this main body piece because we are fusing the Decoville Heavy in place. You end up not needing any additional interfacing. So with this piece wrong side face up, I drew a long line along these long edges a half inch in from each side because with quilt cotton, we do wanna have a folded finished edge. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of a craft glue stick here, fold it to that line and press it with my iron to hold that fold along these both long edges. Okay, so for the quilt cotton version, we now have a clean folded edge here and it's the same size as the vinyl version pattern piece. We're just leaving this raw because it won't fray, but we don't wanna leave quilt cotton raw, obviously, because it will fray over time. On this one, I did choose to put um, a label, and for this one, it's gonna be on the back wall of the clutch, so if you were to look at it this way, you would see the, the clasp opening would be here, and this would be along the back side. You just need to decide where you want to put it. Keep in mind, the bar clasp will come down at least 3 8 inches down here, so you don't want it super close to the top, but anywhere center, bottom, back, however you want, you'd wanna add it now. Continuing on with our prep work, I'm gonna take the card slot panel here and take the pattern piece and lay it directly on top and transfer these card slot lines. I did fold my fabric in half short end to short end and mark the centers. So I went ahead and drew the lines across so you can kind of see it for the video because our card slots will cover those lines, but do not draw that center line because um, that will not be covered by card slots. But um, so transfer the lines. You can either leave them just on the edges or draw them across for this. And then you're gonna grab your card slots and your bottom card slots. You will notice they are the same width, but one is slightly higher than the other. So you should have four of the smaller sizes and two of the larger sizes. We're gonna flip them over and draw a half inch line from the top edge, the, lo the long side, on all of the these card slot pieces. And then for the Bottom card slots, we're gonna draw a half inch line from the top and the bottom on both of these. Then we're gonna fold those edges to that line and press it with our iron. Starting with the bottom card slot pieces, I am measuring down a half inch, drawing my line, and I have to do it on both sides. So there's only a quarter inch difference between these two pieces, so definitely kinda of keep them separated so that you don't get them confused because that would definitely be very easy to do. So for these, we're just doing all of the top edges. So if you have a directional fabric, keep that in mind because you don't want to do it on the bottom edge, but continue to draw it on the re remaining pieces. Using my trusty dusty craft glue stick, I'm gonna use that to help me fold these edges. So we don't want to fold at that line, we want to fold to the line on all the pieces, including the bottom card slats, we're folding both edges. Now that the edges have been folded, they're technically now the same size. So that's why it's important to keep them separated. So we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all four of these folded edges. And we're gonna top stitch along the top of what these bottom card slots are, but we're not gonna do anything with the bottom folded edge. I just wanna point out that I am using my standard uh, foot here and from the needle to the edge of the foot is a quarter inch. So because the whole wallet is being constructed using a quarter inch seam allowance, I like to leave this foot on and use the edge of my foot to go along um, the edge of my fabric to be a guide so that I can sew those accurate seam allowances. Now I take the back of the card slot panel piece and we've got our drawn lines and we're gonna add our card slot. So 
We're gonna start with three on the one side and we're gonna rotate our panel and do the same exact process on the other side. So we start with the top line first using one of the card slot pieces. We're not using, the bottom card slots will be the third slot that we add. So we're gonna lay that right on top of the drawn line or lining up these corner lines, these edge lines, right on top. And we're gonna sew a quarter inch above this raw edge to attach this pocket. Then we're gonna take another one of the card slots and lay it just on top of the next line. Sew a quarter inch. Now when we get to the third slot, that's the one with the bottom folded edge. That You wanna take the bottom card slot and lay it on top here. So we are gonna sew that quarter inch up here, but then I will come back down and um, sew an eighth inch from the edge because we still want all the card slots to fit exactly where they need to be. So I've just finished the first set of card slots and I did go ahead and tack them to the card slot panel on both sides so they're now one piece. And we're going to flip the panel around and repeat that same exact process using the card, two card slots on the top and then the bottom card slot along the bottom. Now, anytime I'm doing a card slot installation, I always want to double check that when I'm complete that they do fit nicely because you don't want to realize once your wallet is complete that you really jacked something up along the way. So they should be evenly spaced um, and look really nice on both sides. If not, this is the time you want to seam rip and get it fixed before we move along. Looks right good. Now I'm going to take the opportunity to just kind of even up any overhanging edges. I'm not taking any width away. I'm just t squaring it up is all I'm doing. So this little overhang, I want gone. And repeat. All right, so now that it's cleaned up, we're gonna take our um, card slot side pieces and we're gonna lay them right sides facing, lining up this long edge along the top and the bottom. We'll keep that in place and sew a quarter inch seam allowance, press it open and top stitch. We're gonna repeat that with both pieces. Again, because I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna use the edge, raw edge of this lined up with the raw edge of my foot here and use that as my guide. other side. So 
Now I want to press this open. I'll, I'm going to take it over to the iron to get it a nice um, clean press. And then we're going to top stitch along um, the top here an eighth inch from the edge. Anytime I'm adding side panels and stuff, I do end up getting like them uneven along the tops and the bottom. So we want to trim that up so it is squared off. But keep in mind this wallet needs to be perfectly symmetrical when you fold it. So you can't just take all of it off from one end. So whatever you take off, cut off from one end, you have to remove the same, roughly the same amount from each end. And then when this panel is finished, it should be 10 inches tall. So we just want to make sure. We're not taking off height, we're just evening it up. So let's just verify that we're still within we need to be, and we are still at 10 inches, so we're good. Now, this panel needs to be seven and three eighths inches wide. So I find that if you're maintaining your accurate seam allowances, if I line up my ruler at one and three quarters inch on this fold and cut that off of each side, then you will end up with the width you need. So I'm at the one and three quarter inch line across from the fold and I'm gonna lop off this extra. So let me make sure I'm lined up with the bottom and on that fold, take that off there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm lining up the three quarter inch line up top and bottom, cut this off. So now when you measure, across it should be seven and three eighths inches which is what we want now if you don't have a ruler that has the fractions listed on it and you're not um, able to tell where the seven and three eighths inch piece is take your main body pattern piece and at the dash lines on the side fold those in because that's your stabilizer pattern and then just make sure it's the same width as your stabilizer now that this panel is complete i'm going to go ahead and fold it short end to short end so i can mark my side centers here. So I just cut little bitty triangles because they're easier to see for me than using pins or a marking. And then we will go ahead and install our zipper pocket. Now we're going to install our zipper pocket. So I like to use eighth inch double sided tape for this to kind of keep everything secure. Otherwise you can baste in, be in between each um, step to help hold things from shifting. Now when it comes to your pockets, You'll notice that it almost looks like a perfect square, but it's not. It is seven and three eighths inch wide, but it's only seven inches um, long. So make sure that it, it is meeting up with those side edges that you're not actually putting it where it falls short. Okay, so using my eighth inch double sided tape, I'm gonna lay a strip along this top portion here. And I like my zipper pulls to the left so there's no right or wrong way to do it i just like i think you should be consistent if you're going to put it to the right then make sure always to keep it to the right so we're going to lay it face down centered over there lining up those edges kind of pulled my pull into the middle here and then you could either use another piece of double-sided tape to get this pocket this way stuck in place or just use clips. I'm gonna use clips and I'm gonna sew from this side up a quarter inch seam allowance. You wanna feel for your zipper pull and pull it out of the way. Keep your needle in the down position so that it doesn't shift out of place when you do that. So now we're gonna press everything away from the zipper. So I will take it over to the iron so that I can get this a nice crease here. And then this area, depending on the materials you're using, could get kind of bulky. So I will take my hammer or my mallet and I will hammer this as flat as possible before sewing over it because sometimes different machines can glitch if it so, has to sew over a bumpy area like that. So I made sure to press the panel away from the zipper and then I top stitch an eighth inch from the edge. So we're gonna flip the panel over. 
I did already lay some double-sided tape and I removed the adhesive backing along that top edge. So we're gonna take the zipper pocket and fold it up so that the right side is now facing the back side of the zipper and line up that edge and press into the adhesive. You'll have this little fold along the bottom that will be the bottom of your pocket. Flip it over and then take your zipper top panel, lay it right down on top of your zipper, right sides facing. Clip that in place, sew a quarter inch and press it open and top stitch. Coming up to my zipper pull, so with the needle down, I have to move that out of the way before I can move along. Press that well and top stitch an eighth inch from the edge there. All right, so now that this pocket is installed, I'm going to stop with my needle down here and come down and tack this folded edge to this main body piece here. And then I will do the same thing on this side. So I'm also sewing across the zipper here so that my pull cannot come off accidentally after that. So now that this pocket is done, we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. We're gonna still keep the zipper pull to the left and do everything the same way so that when it's folded, our zippers will zip in opposite directions. If you prefer them to be on the same side, then you'll have this zipper start on the right-hand side. Both zipper pockets are now installed. So we're just gonna clean things up a little bit. So I wanna just move my zipper out of the way and trim this long edge so it's all Nice and even, even up my zippers. We do that on both sides. Did I not get it? It's not. Probably my sign I need to clean, change out my rotary blade. Okay. And repeat with this side. Now to me, it was important that we have extra wiggle room to trim down so it's nice and even and everything symmetrical versus it being just perfect and relying on accurate seam allowances. So I want to account for a little bit of human error. So now this panel is too tall. We want it to be 12 inches finished. So if you measure it as is right now, it's a little past 12 and a half. So we need to trim from the top the same amount. Remember, it needs to be perfectly symmetrical. So you're not going to just trim off one edge and call it a day. So I'm going to go ahead and sometimes it can end up a little wavy if your, your seam allowance isn't perfectly even, but just start by trimming off a smidge, a quarter inch from one side. And I'm going to have to go over my zipper pull, so I have to be careful. But I'm going to take off a quarter inch from one edge And I'm going to repeat that on this side and then remeasure and keep trimming off equal amounts so that it is 12 inches high and perfectly symmetrical. All right, so we still have about an eighth inch to remove on each side. So again, keeping it nice and symmetrical. go and measure again. Now we have our 12 inches. So this panel is ready to go. We still have our center markings here. That's important. It's perfectly symmetrical when you fold it. Now grab those two small stabilizer pieces. We're going to fuse it to the top edge. We want a little um, oomph up here for our bar clasp to sit nice and flush inside and there's not a big old gap. 
So I will fuse these um, in place and they are cut short so you do have gaps on each end so make sure it's centered along this top edge on both sides. Now if this is like a waterproof canvas or a material that doesn't fuse well you can just stick it in place with some double sided tape. So I've got my stabilizer strips fused to the back side of here. And then we're going to go ahead and add a strip of double-sided tape to the back side along the long edges here, sticking with my eighth inch tape. On both sides. And I'll take that backing off. There you go. Now take your main body piece, flip it so the wrong side is up, and we're gonna line this up with the uh, the stabilizer on this side. So top edges, and right on top of the stabilizer, stick it in place, just like that. And press. All right, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna sew an eighth inch along this top edge to um, join these together, both sides. So I did sew the top edge on both ends here. I'm gonna add another strip of the eighth inch double-sided tape along this folded edge now. Because this edge is folded, I'm not gonna cut a center mark in here. I'm gonna add a little, uh, I wanna note where the center is and we'll, it's important because of the bottom gusset, which is next, that we know where the bottom, the center is along this long folded edge. All right, so to show you our vinyl version, we're right at the same step. It, the only difference is, is this is raw, it's not folded. So I did add a little marking here. So when we fold it over, again, you're not gonna see this edge in the final construction of the bag. Now we're gonna assemble our side gussets. I'm gonna do the quilt cotton version first and then we'll jump to the vinyl version because it is constructed differently. Um, if you don't need the quilt cotton version and you wanna just click the timestamp that takes you directly to that, you can skip this portion of the video. So I used a um, medium weight woven interfacing on my quilt cotton pieces. So because this is the exterior portion of the side gusset, I just skipped it on this. It's more just to um, make the inside pretty. But if it was all quilt cotton and Shape Flex 101, make sure you interface all your pieces. So to start, we're gonna go ahead and sew all our dart pieces together. So you're gonna fold it right sides facing in half, lining up these darts along the bottom and you're going to sew a quarter inch. You're going to do that for all four pieces. Got all the darts sewn, so now we're gonna go ahead and trim these down to an eighth inch. Okay, so now we're gonna take an exterior with a liner and we're gonna lay them, those straight top edges together, right sides facing. So we're gonna sew a quarter inch across and then press it open and flip it so that now the wrong sides are facing. And we're gonna do that with both of the gussets. So I just sewed along that top edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. We're just gonna press this seam open with our iron. Thank you. 
and then now we're gonna fold that push the darts in together just like that I'll clip this top edge to hold that and then we're lining up all these edges just like this and now we're gonna sew a quarter inch from the top here and then we're just gonna take it an eighth inch just to secure the lining to the exterior on the remaining sides. We're gonna do that on both pieces. So for this top edge, it's the quarter inch. And then I'm coming within an eighth inch of this side and we're just tacking these two together. Okay, so lastly, you can add your double eighth inch double sided tape to the back side of this, or you can add it along your, your main body piece. But I'm gonna add my double sided tape to this portion. So you can see with this, you have you know a pretty portion of the interior of the wallet. This is how it's gonna be. It's gonna look like that. So that's pretty. Um, but we will have so much bulk along this top if we do that same method with vinyl cork or leather. So that's why I'm doing the HTV for this portion or the other option is to just kind of spray baste the fabric on here and then fold it on top and assemble it the same way. We just don't want to see this fabric backing, personal preference. So I have my HTV cut to the appropriate size. Now, when it comes to this, you want to be very careful with your heat setting and how long you're pressing it. I don't actually do it with my heat press because I want to do short bursts at a time and keep checking because I don't want to affect the print on the back if there's like um, a pebble texture and this has the lace. So we're going to go short bursts and we're going to do the guess and check. So I have a Teflon sheet here. So I'm going to line that right up on top, put my Teflon sheet and I'm just going to move my iron around fairly quickly, hoping that it adheres, but I'm not doing any damage to my vinyl. So, so far it feels pretty good. And then we'll just peel off the plastic backing that's on top. So here we go. So now the inside of my wallet is pretty. So we're going to sew those darts just like we did the other way, but instead this edge gets folded over a quarter inch. So if you want to draw your half inch line folded over in top stitch to be accurate, go for it. If you prefer to do this next step where we're adding the side gussets with just clips because you're worried about the double sided tape, that is certainly an option. I do find double sided tape works best for um, those non fraying materials like vinyl cork leather, waterproof canvas not as great with fabric, but it's still helpful. So that's why I am still using double-sided tape for this. So you're gonna take one of your side gussets and with the right side face up, we're gonna take that center mark of the gusset and we're gonna lay it down on the center mark of this inner portion, not the folded edge or the exterior edge. It's gonna be along this center mark. So I'm gonna take the adhesive backing off here and I'm gonna take that center mark and lay it right there and hold it in place. So then it, you could use your body to kind of fold this up and around, but you want to just kind of follow this fold, lining up the edge of the gusset with the edge of the interior portion of the wallet. Now it's gonna come shy. You should have at least 3 8 inch from that edge. So we're gonna do this along both sides Make sure to pull this up and kind of use your wrist to hold the other end so it doesn't pull apart. 
and you should find that you have equal gaps along the top on both sides. So if any of your center markings are a little off, you need to redo this portion. So just like that, so it's falling in the same spot, same amount on each side, and then holding it folded like this. Then I'll remove the adhesive backing off the folded edge. Starting at the center, I clip this portion in place. So I'm gonna grab my clips here, and I clip that. Then from the center out, I fold that edge, and I'm going over the stiffness of the stabilizer. So I fold it over the stiffness until we get this portion done. And then we can come up here and fold and clip. So the clips are more just to help hold that double-sided tape. And I'm folding it over. As soon as we kind of get it positioned, then we can go back and work, work out any like ripples that we may have created. So let's just get this Fold it over in place. Just like this. All right, so if there's like any ripples or stuff you're not liking, just take that time to work them out with your fingers. Right here. Okay. There we go. So we got the one side together. Now we're gonna repeat the same process with the other side. So I've got my clips in place, just kind of helping hold those side folds in place. And again, this is the portion you wanna make sure that the folds are equal on both sides so that you have enough room to add your bar clasp to. It's not gonna bump into the top of this. So I will admit this is probably the trickiest part of the whole wallet, sewing this gusset. But by having this dart here, it does allow you to get down here with a little, little trouble, but it is doable. So my main trick here for a nice finish on the front and back is to use the edge of your foot as your guide and focus on maintaining a quarter inch seam allowance because we're going to sew from the inside, unless you have a cylinder arm machine or something where you can po put it on the top and go this way, we are sewing on the inside. Main, your focus should just be on a quarter inch seam allowance all the way going up across here so that when it's finished and you're looking at the outside of your wallet, it will be really pretty on the exterior. Okay, so just go slow. And anytime you stop, because you're repositioning your wallet, make sure your needle is in the down position. Otherwise you go to move it you're gonna have jagged stitches. So my whole focus with this portion, this is area's a little bulky, so I might go, I'm gonna go slow here, is maintaining a quarter inch. So I'm not so much concerned about the folded edge as I am that quarter inch. So I'm just pinching my wallet out of the way so I can see. This bottom portion is the trickiest. Just go slow. As soon as you get to the very bottom, it's kind of an awkward position. Just kind of manhandle your wallet, go slow. Now it's super hard for me to see, but my needle is down. So now I'm gonna push this and move it around till we can get past this difficult portion. I'm going super slow because that quarter inch straight line is the most important. So we're past the hard part. But you still have to use your hand to keep the wallet out of the way of your machine. bulky area, I might just hand crank this. Okay, so not too terrible. It's, it's tricky, I will give you that, but it is doable. So now, nice and straight. All right, so now I just flip it around and do the same exact same thing on this side. We 
are almost done with our wallet. We just need to add our hardware here. So for this next step, you do need the bar clasp closure. You're gonna need a small Phillips screwdriver and then some Loctite or some strong glue that we're gonna put inside the bar clasp to really secure things. Um, since this is fabric, when you go to cut out this center notch, you may wanna add some fray check. Uh, another option for these itty bitty screws is using like a thread locker glue. My understanding of that is if you dab it on this, it, the screws can be removed if you need them to be removed with a screwdriver, but they won't jiggle out of place. I don't typically use the thread locker, but that would be personal preference. But you do still really want to add some sort of glue finisher for your um, wallet. Now, the other option to make this into a purse is to add side connectors here. So if you are going to use the side connector, we're gonna use the same method where we're gonna add a little bit of the glue in the channel, but I would go ahead and hammer these areas with a mallet or a hammer real quick before we put on our bar clasp. So determining the front and back of your wallet, so if you have better stitching on one side or um, if you've already determined you put your label somewhere and there's a front and a back, um, with your right side face up, the um, hole portion is gonna go on the front portion of the wallet, but we don't wanna see the screw holes. So we're gonna have to flip it this way so the screw holes are on the interior of the wallet. So we're gonna thread this on top, just like so. It should be a perfect fit. And we're gonna trace this hole on the inside because that needs to be cut away. So that's the portion I'm talking about, adding a little bit of fray check. But we wanna cut enough away from this hole that you can't see the fabric in the hole, but look at how narrow this channel is. So you gotta be very careful when you cut down that you're not cutting too far down or you will see your cut lines. So I'm gonna grab a marking tool, trace my hole, and then we'll go ahead and cut that hole away. I've removed the bar clasp so you can see my traced circle. So um, I'm gonna cut just beyond my marking here, but no lower because of that narrow channel. But really, you can just cut out a little scoop here. You don't have to cut out a perfect oval because this top is gonna get tucked into your channel. So what I found was the easiest is I have these um, multi-size punches from Amazon. It comes 39 to a set. And then I have a special press plate for my press. So I will just line that up over my trace lines and, and punch that hole and it's usually nice clean edges clean cuts and it's the fastest but again if you have sharp scissors just go ahead and cut very carefully a, a little moon shape out of your fabric so i just threaded my press inside or if you wanted to trace the hole from the other side you could do that but i just stuck it right inside line up the edge right at my trace mark and then we'll just press with the press So now I'm just gonna take my scissors and just catch or trim away whatever it didn't catch or I'll actually repress it probably. So this is where you would add your fray check and then again, do a double check that you cut enough away that you can't see it in the window um, and, you, and it fits really well. So I'm very happy with that fit. So now I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna add a bead of glue down into the channel. We don't wanna put gobs of glue because we don't want it oozing out of the holes or getting on our bar class or on our project. So um, this is just an Loctite Extreme Glue. And I'm just gonna, like I said, squeeze a, a thin bead so that it sits in the bottom. Of the bar class. All right, so remember, the screw holes need to go towards the interior of the wallet. You don't want it to go this way. Push it nice and firm down. And then, I know it's kind of shadowed now, but now I'm gonna take my Phillips screwdriver and the little itty bitty screws and screw them in place. So you wanna leave the bar clasps in place with the glue for a good 24 hours before you go using this wallet. So once we put the, I'm not even punching holes, like the the um, screws just go straight in to um, pinch the fabric and hold the bar in place. But give it a full 24 hours to cure before you actually use your wallet. That's the tricky side, but now that's screwed in place, we're gonna do the same thing with the opposite end, which actually has the clasp. Remember the screw holes go on the interior portion of the wallet, but now this is more obvious because at least if you put it this way, you would already know that your clasp isn't gonna be able to close. So um, again, you wanna do another fit, 
make sure it fits really well. And um, then go ahead and add your bead of glue, screw in your holes, and the wallet portion is done. Here is our completed wallet. You should be so proud you got it this far. Love it. Um, so here's the clutch version, you know, perfect for a little party outing. But if you want to add a strap, either a wristlet or a shoulder, we do need to add these little connectors to the side. I'm a big fan of these D-ring side connectors. You probably look familiar because you've seen them from our Slim Sling pattern. Um, but our testers have also tried out like a baby D-ring option. So um, you would have to push that in further those One, so the D-ring isn't sticking out and you can see it. But two, you don't want to punch your hole through this folded edge because that's it'll be a stress point with a strap. And you don't want this pulled away. So you would have to come in fairly far, punch your hole through all layers, and you'll see the rivet on the back side if you use the baby D-ring option. But scroll through our tester photos. Like I said, some used it. It does look really nice. Um, but today, I'm going to use these. So you'll notice that when you purchase these, they do come in a two-pack, a right and a left. So you have screw holes in the front, and then these are faux screw holes so that will be on the back portion of my wallet so i'm gonna do a test fit here this is also why um, i hammered these edges because we want this area pretty narrow i hammered it before i added the clasp and then also for our vinyl the uh, vinyl cork leather version why we construct it differently because we need this area to have um, way less bulk than if we were to do it where you have four layers of leather so you would slide it into place like this we're going to add glue into the channel and screw in our little tiny screws and then you will have the option to add a strap so it's pretty inconspicuous if you're keeping it in clutch mode but it, um, perfect opportunity to add a crossbody strap if you needed friends welcome back today's tutorial is for the newest pattern from wins handmade the ashley clutch wallet perfect and perfect and what and just in time 